And so the process that I like to use, I call it the piston pump technique. Uh, we've been using this for, for decades and it's extremely effective. There's many different ways to irrigate, but they're not all very effective and some of them can be uncomfortable, especially for bladder extrophy patients uh, who have very sensitive uh, bladder necks and so they're not uh, always the greatest fans of irrigating and so we try to find methods that they can still irrigate effectively and be comfortable and this always seems to work well. And so we're just going to show you a little uh, demonstration. So you just pour out a little bit of your fluid and if you just put the cap back on these and don't stick anything inside them they'll stay good for you know a couple weeks up to 30 days if you don't contaminate them. And you just need enough fluid to be able to draw up uh, a couple of ounces uh, worth into your syringe. If it has an air bubble in it, I always take the bubbles out, but it will not hurt the bladder if you put air bubbles in through the catheter, that won't hurt anything. Then you're going to need to put the catheter on the end of your uh, syringe. And this would be done after you've already emptied your bladder. So the bladder is now completely empty and you're now ready to irrigate. What we like to do is once you instill all the fluid, and so I just hold on to the syringe where I can get my hand around it, and I can still see the letters and the numbers very good, the markings. I use just three fingers. I always tell people, put these two fingers away, put two fingers here and one finger here. It allows you to have more control over the syringe versus if you're trying to grab these edges and go back and forth, it creates not a very smooth movement. You get a much more rhythmic movement if you can do three fingers, hold it here. You can also brace your elbows in. This would be if you were irrigating for somebody. Children that learn and patients that learn to irrigate on their own basically just have this catheter turned around and they figure out ways to hold on to it and be able to manipulate it and irrigate the way they can most effectively. And so we use a technique called the piston pump. And so once the fluid is instilled all the way into the bladder, you just simply pull back to make sure that you don't have any resistance. Um, because again, these eyelets, if they're too far into the catheter or the, into the, the bladder, those eyelets can get up against the mucosa. And when you pull back, it can create suction. And that may be uncomfortable for the patient. It can be like a little tinge or a little shock. It's not going to hurt anything. Sometimes you may see a little speck of blood just from the mucosa. Again, that's not going to hurt anything. Uh, you're not going to damage anything by that. We just need to use, you know, good technique. And so it's trying to find that sweet spot where the catheter basically just hovers the tip in the center of the bladder. Now imagine if this is the bladder and there's a lot of debris and sediment down in the bottom. It settles just like sand in a cup. And so if we were to stir this up like a snow globe, well now the debris is all stirred up in the bladder, you're working it around like a washing machine, and you should be able to aspirate all the contents out before it settles back down to the bladder. And that's what's nice about this technique, is that once all the fluid is in, you just simply pull back very gently to make sure that you don't have resistance on that catheter, tip and everything moves nicely. And so you can see no resistance. I come back to the 10 mark and I leave a 5 cc window so that when I'm doing this motion, 5, 10, 5, 10, 5, 10, some people like to go 15, 5, 15, 5, but you can see in this five increment motion, you're creating a pump piston effect like a washing machine in the bladder that is again stirring up all this debris. And so it doesn't matter how many pumps that you do, if you've pumped it around eight to 10 times and you feel like you've stirred the debris up and sediment nicely, you can tell by looking in this window. Well, in one smooth motion, you're going to then aspirate the rest of the contents out before it settles back down in the bottom of the bladder. And as you go to the back, just slow down a little bit when you get into this 40 range so that you're not pulling very hard, but you're still pulling with control. Because as the bladder shrinks down, it will shrink down around the tips of the eyelets. And if you're pulling back too hard and fast, it can pinch a little bit. And so once it comes back to the 60, generally you're going to see some bubbles form 
in the catheter, which lets you know you're pretty empty or that you may not see bubbles and it just lets you know, well, you're done. And so you can take that off, squirt that contents out, if you need to irrigate again, because you can irrigate several times in a row until the bladder is clear, you may need to irrigate with 60 two to three times in one setting to get the bladder completely clear. Um, what I often recommend to patients is when they notice they're having more colonization issues, foul odor, very cloudy, maybe some discomfort, at the first time they see those symptoms, irrigate with each cath over the next 72 hours or three days. And if you do that, the chances that you're going to knock that colonization out without having to use antibiotics is very high. And so then you have full control over that bladder environment. And when you irrigate, I have a, a, a mannequin here, a little a, a small baby, and when we irrigate small babies, we don't quite use 60 because their bladders aren't big enough, but you can irrigate with 30. Uh, and you can do it in the same manner. Children that have augmented bladders, where we have uh, made the bladder larger using a piece of, of small bowel or large bowel or stomach, whatever it may be, um, they have very big bladders and sometimes 60 may not be enough. And so for instance, you put the full 60 in, that gives you the opportunity to use your, your catheter plug and just simply plug it so it doesn't leak out, draw up another 30 or 60 if you need because you can irrigate with 90 or 120. Now, what are the advantages of using 60 mLs? And this is pretty standard on pretty much every person that irrigates that's not an infant, 60 will work fine. 30 is simply not enough for older people because it makes it too hard to irrigate you want to have more fluid in so that you're not pinching the bladder when you're going back and forth. And so that is a very effective technique. I've, I've taught many, many patients how to do that. Uh, and they are able to manage colonization, prevent UTIs and stones very well. Uh, on the website, we'll scan in one of uh, my articles. I wrote a, a short article on bladder irrigation and the advantages that will be out there for you to read. And if you ever need any assistance uh, with bladder irrigation, we do teaching sessions for catheterization and irrigation, and we're always glad to work with you. So again, my name is Jake Klein with OKC Kids Urology. Thanks for tuning in.